Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 33rd eBay Tech Talk already. We are here this evening to uh, give you two talks. Uh, Ignacio and Roddy will talk about your eye tests with multiple iOS simulators. Enjoy. Okay, good evening. Um, the second talk. Um, my name is Roddy, my uh, colleague Ignacio. We will do the talk together. Um, we will talk about parallelizing uh, UI tests uh, on iOS and I will kind of show you why it is a good idea to have UI tests in the first place and uh, uh, why you want to uh, parallelize them afterwards. Um, I will tell you what kind of tools we use and Ignacio will go into uh, all the details. So, does that work? No, it doesn't. Ah, okay. Um, why UI tests? Um, if I would put it into one picture, it would be this one. You see, um, the propeller is working, it has a unit test. The chimney is working, it has a unit test. So Loads of other stuff is working. It has a unit test, but the ship is sinking nevertheless. Because somehow you didn't test the whole system. And um, seriously, um, let me show you a video to, to really uh, demonstrate what I mean. So can I do this? Okay, we open up the app, we say uh, we are searching for a car, and um, it's we, want, we want to use a professional seller, so I'm, I'm, I'm filtering here a little bit. And um, when we have, when we have uh, found our car, uh, let's take that Skoda, and um, we say, okay, this is a cool car, let's just put that into our favorites. And um, then I decide, okay, let's let's look at the the seller, and this guy obviously has some other cool cars. Well, maybe not, but I'm still want to follow that uh, that seller. And um, you see, this follow button went green. So I go to my uh, page, and I see, okay, I have this car in my in my uh, favorites, and. Here, the follow button is green, right? Because I followed this guy already. Then I go to all the users I follow, and the guy I followed is on top. And when I look at, at all his cars, I see, okay, the button is green again because I followed this guy. Now, I see, okay, those cars are not so good after all. I unfollow the guy. And I go back. Uh, the guy is is gone from my list, and if I look at the 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 ad in my favorites again, the button is not green anymore. But I'm because I'm not following this guy anymore. So this was just an example, a uh, 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 a little journey through the app, and you could see um, we had this we had this problem with the follow button that it went. Um, that it went green, not green in some cases. So, so this is this is the kind of thing where you would want to have a a UI test for. Um, but oh, uh, I just I just remembered. I wanted to show you a few other things too. So, sorry about this. I. I need my presenter view notes. <laughs> um, so, um, where's the video? Yes. So, um, I don't know how how good you followed the video, but there were some problems that 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 were in there. Um, 
the the first thing was that um, well the the when I when I when I uh, favorite the ad, the um, the star did not go into the right tab down here. It should go into mines, not in inserieren. But this is something that we can't actually test with a UI test because it's an animation. I don't know if someone knows how to do UI tests on animations. Probably no one does. Um, but the the interesting thing is uh, happens when you uh, see you see up there it says gewerbliche Anbieter. So this is still correct. But um, if we go into Mines um, into into the followed user, suddenly there is no user anymore. There is no. It doesn't even say gewerbliche Anbieter. And um, if you go even further, <laughs> it says private Anbieter up there. So the whole thing is somehow broken, and it's something that we didn't catch with a unit test. So. This is something you might want to do a UI test for. Just as a little, little demo. So, uh, go on, come on. Um, so, what is our UI setup? Um, the first thing, we run our uh, UI tests with KIF, Keep It Functional. It's a framework that is around for some time now. Um, it basically finds views and controls, and it taps and swipes and enters tests and those, uh, just as you've seen in the other talk. Um, then we use FB Snapshot test case this is quite cool. So you can you can take a snapshot of any view there is, and um, to to record it. And if you really run the tests, you take the snapshot again. And if something changes, your test your uh, test goes red. Um, there is a little plugin for Xcode which actually shows you when a when a test is failing. And you can you can uh, see the comparison between the recorded one and the and the one the, the the failing one. And the last thing we are using is called VCR URL session, and this one is is quite handy because we record all of the network calls, the requests, and the responses. Um, and when the test actually runs, we only use the recorded responses inside the test. Um, this speeds up the test uh, quite a bit, but the real benefit of it is um, the tests are way more reliable. Um, So you might wonder, why not use Xcode UI tests, because it's built into Xcode. Um, I did a slide on that, because I think it's, it's worth noting that um, in Xcode UI tests, the app and the test actually run in different processes. This has some, 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 uh, uh, some things, like there's no snapshots are possible. Um, Xcode actually does snapshots, but it only takes snapshots so then when, when one of your tests goes red, you can see what's on screen when the test goes red, but it doesn't compare these snapshots. Um, and the second one is the mocking of input data is very, very hard. You have to kind of build it into your app that actually runs, and it's not part of your tests, but part of your app, and it's kind of meh. And the other thing is, it's even slower than KIF because it reruns the app for every single test case. So um, if you have a small app and it doesn't do much, you might get away with it, but we don't. And it does not work on the iOS 8 simulator. So if you really want to test on iOS 8, you're out of luck. 
Let's come to the, pain, uh, to the main topic, parallelizing UI tests. Why? Well, the obvious answer is speed. We have about 600 unit tests which execute in about 18 seconds, which is not fast, but it's fast enough to just run them. And we have about 60 UI tests which take six minutes to run. So, mm -hmm. But there's an additional problem. Can you spot the difference between the left and the right thing? <laughs> Has anyone a guess? The time, yeah, well, apart from the time. <laughs> apart from the time. I'll tell you. Um, thank you, Apple. They changed the system font between iOS 8 and iOS 9. Helvetica versus San Francisco. Our designer insisted on having the system font on the app. So, who's who wants to guess which one is iOS 8 and which one is iOS 9? iOS 8 on the left? Who's for iOS 8 on the left? No one. One, two person? iOS 8 on the right? Okay, no one wants to guess. Um, iOS, left, iOS 8 is on the left. <laughs> so this means we have to run our tests on iOS 8 and iOS 9. And since we have an iPad app, we have to run the tests on the iPad app on iOS 8 and iOS 9, which means we run the tests four times, right? For all these, uh, for all these uh, combinations, so there's a low-hanging fruit here. We parallel parallelize those four runs and we cut the time into a quarter about, right? So what next? Yeah, without changing this, the, the, the project. That's, that's the important part here. So the how. Um, the first tool we, we use is XE tool. It's kind of a stand-in for Apple's Xcode build that builds on the command line. Um, it does roughly the same thing, but it has some, some things to it which makes it all possible. Uh, the second one is called Sim Control. It's a Ruby interface to, to, to XE run. Nothing fancy, but you will see. And we have some Ruby glue code there, which resets the simulators, compiles the test code, starts parallel simulators, runs the test suit in each simulator, and then collects the results, and well, of course displays the results. So this code, this interesting code, <laughs> Ignacio is going to show it to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Roddy. So, to show you something, guys, we created a, a demo project. This, called the, this project is called the Emoji Cart. It's a straightforward application. It looks like an um, e commerce application. So, the user must log in at the beginning. Uh, then, he can see the list of item that we want to sell. In this case, we sell emoji. That is a cool side business. And of course, he can add or remove product uh, to his cart. And then at the end, uh, clicking on the call to action button, the user can go to the, to the cart. Uh, and for you that do know how this emoji is called, this is <laughs> called the can back emoji. And if you don't know why, uh, you can search on YouTube the video is TDD that. This basically is scan back that say that everything is a trade-off. Um, okay, but it's too fast. Uh, this is the main core, this is the main functionality of our application. We want to be sure that this functionality works and works perfectly in every release of our application. Uh, if this doesn't work, we are going to lose money. So we want to test this application. And we want to be sure 110%. We want to be 100% sure that this works. And uh, how can we be so sure? 
Of course, we write our test. Uh, how we write the test? We write a lot of unit tests for testing each single component. Like we write our tests for the plugin view controller and for the mm, uh, list view controller and as well for the um, cart view controller. But what is the problem? The problem is that probably we need to write tests also for the communication between this part. We need to run, we need to write tests to ensure that the communication between this view controller and the login and as well with the cart view controller it's working as we intended, right? So what we do, we learn that we to test this case, to test the isolation, we write mock. And this is at the end how our application or how our test looks like. We have a system and then test, that is what we wanna test, for example, the login view controller, and we have all around all this mock object. So I don't know you, but I always, when I write this, kind of test, I have a voice on my ear that say, uh, is it a, this the code that will execute on, on the live version of the application or is it something different? Are you sure that uh, you tested everything or is it something that maybe you miss? How did how the unit test work? The unit test work that if you change one line of code, you have a red test, right? This is uh, our goal. But how can you be sure that if you change one line of code, you have a red test. This is not really, um, really easy. So what we do? We do UI test for be sure that at the this stuff works for, for each release. And uh, Red Rodi already said how we write the, the test. I can show you some, some code. Let's put this away. And go to here. Sorry, I'm not seeing what I'm typing. So this is our Xcode project. And uh, what we have here is a um, UI test that is written with, uh, with KIF. And you can say that we are applying more or less the same approach that Chris said before. So we split our functionality in, s in a small chunk. And uh, at the end, our UI test looks like this one. So we start taking a screenshot of the initial state of the view controller. Then we log in. We had the two whales to the cart. Then we had the can back emoji because it's cool. Then we had the sunglasses. Uh, and then we validate with another screenshot. We validate the uh, order page. And you below, you can see here below how the tests are really executed. I mean, we are um, accessing directly to the to the object uh, to to the view, but the main topic of this talk was about parallelizing test. So, how we can execute this test in a parallel way? Let's open a text editor. So, first of all, first of all, we want to be sure that our tests uh, are executed always in the good environment. We want to be sure that all the tests run with the same version of Ruby, with the same version of Xcode, and, uh, and with all the, the same environment. So we have a bash script. Of course, on our um, live setup, the bash script is more complex than this, but we have uh, this bash script where we select the Xcode version, and then with the RVM, that is Ruby Version Manager, we ensure that we are using the always the right version of, um, of, of Ruby. Sorry. Then, uh, the real task is just this rake task. 
So we grouped our our task in into rake task because we think that using rake task make all the tests um, more easy to execute and to, to read. So, and this is what, what we do. I can try to explain uh, line by line. I have just 20 line of code. Uh, let's keep it for the first, let's keep this launch method. Uh, the first thing that we do is that we get the path of XC tool. As Roddy said before, we're using XC tool because uh, only with X XC tool is possible to run a multiple uh, test on multiple simulator. Um, and because we want to we want to have a reliable test, we put the version of X XC tool directly into the repository. So we get the path here um, that is inside our repository. Uh, by the way, the difference between XC tool and the X, uh, Xcode build is that with Xcode build, is it possible to run a test uh, in, uh, in a specific simulator, but if you are already running a test in one simulator and you try to run the second one, the first one is killed. So, and this is why we use XC tool, because they do kind of a magic, and when you run the first test on the si first simulator, you can run the second one without killing the first one. This is what XC tool gives to us. Second thing that we do, okay, we create the base command. This is not executing nothing. This is just appending some parameters to XC tool. And the important thing is that we use this derived data folder. This is super important because this gives us the opportunity to build the application only once. Because otherwise, if you don't specify the derived data folder, every time that you build, the derived data folder will be different and uh, you need to build the application three times or four times, depends on how many simulators do you have. But in this case, we pass, we pass, this, we pass the path and uh, all the compiled files are stored into this um, folder. Then we use the gem that Roddy told before, this uh, sim control. This is a Ruby gem um, that is a wrapper around the uh, Xcode run simulator. So this gem is able to uh, give an interface for uh, executing and configuring um, uh, iOS simulator. In this case, for example, we are creating a two simulator. One is iPhone 5, the other one is iPhone 6 and uh, we run the latest version of um, Xcode. For each device, we run this device, we launch the device, and this is the function that we skip at the beginning. So this is just uh, some wait line to be sure that the uh, simulator is up and running. And then finally we build the project. So this is uh, another thing that the Xcode tool is able to do. This is called build test. This will not build the whole application. This is smart enough to build only the file that are required to build the test. If you have some classes that are not part of the test target, uh, Xcode, Xcode tool just will not build. And there we start some magic because we start creating the thread. Of course, if we, if we, at this point, if we start running the test in one line and then on the next line we start the other test, this will be not executed in parallel. This will execute the first test and then when the first test is completed, we will execute the second one. But we don't want, we want to create some magic with the thread. So we loop into this array that contains at this moment two devices and we create a new thread and uh, in this thread we execute the test. So this is the base command, this is, this is Xcode tool and we finally run the test. The destination is important, the destination is the ID of the running uh, simulator. So in this case this means that in one thread we will run the test on the device iPhone 5 and on the other thread we run the device on the iPhone 6. So the tests run here, both. 
and they will have some exit code that we collect here. We want to collect the exit code from, from each thread, right? We store this the exit code, and then we kill the simulator because we want to keep our machine clean, right? At the end, there are these two um, parallel threads that are running. We need to wait for both thread. We need to that every thread finish, and you know on, uh, on Ruby, this is done, done by this join method. So we wait for each thread, and then we collect the exit code from each thread. So basic, and we use here as an exit code of our script. So basically, this means that at if at least one of the uh, thread has a return code that is uh, one or whatever we return an, um, an exit code. And this is basically our, our script. Um, thanks to uh, X Xcode Simulator and uh, Xe tool, we are able to run the test in parallel. So now, <laughs> we keep a finger crossed and we try to execute. <laughs> So let's put this here. So we use bundle exec rake um, test. And we show. At the beginning, we should see that the application is compiled. And you cannot see because I have a double screen. But in the meantime, the simulator are starting. One and two. In this case, it's just two, but for our live application, we have four, for example. Um, yeah, it works. So and this, we are running the UI test. So we log in, we select the whale uh, emoji at the beginning, then we select the can back, and then the smiling face. And it works. On the output here, we should see that now we have a two run test. That's it. Um, I have only one, the last one slide. So if you are interested on this topic, uh, you should really see this slide. So this is where you can find all the tools that we are using from uh, Keef, uh, the snapshot, uh, the two uh, um, gem from from Plu that we are that we are using, and the repository on for Xe tool. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell. Sorry, uh, we are using a custom version of Xe tool because the current version of Xe, XE tool contains some bug, some bugs that we fix it, and uh, until they merge the pull request, we are using our custom version. And uh, this is the demo project that, if you are interested, you can download. Um, now, if there are questions, two questions, please. Does this technology of the emoji card contains to the script which you created? Uh, sorry, again. The script which you created for parallel running of uh, the, the test on the simulators? This is script, uh, like the test, the script, the Ruby script is part of the repositories. Yes, so you can find the, if you fork or if you don't clone the repository, you will find the project and inside the rake task for uh, building the test in parallel. No. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Okay. Yes. So I have a question, but first, uh, I would like to defend the XUI test a bit. <laughs> so we use it uh, mm. since quite recently. I think that until now it I serves think a purpose. That until now it has served a purpose. Um, I would disagree with the two facts that it doesn't take screenshots because it can do it. I mean, not that it's built in extra screenshots, but there are external. <laughs> 
might not, not do the comparison, but it's something we're afraid to do that. Also the fact that and also the fact that it's a black box, so the, the, because the app is a black box that the test doesn't have any access to, it's not necessarily about, I mean, we, we, we do have a test information as a new, we'll see the next week, and he doesn't necessarily have to know the information from the app, so he's able to test on his own way, without messing with the app itself. It is my impression that writers are end-to-end -end which means that uh, they should test the entire functionality, including the APIs of the app, so actual data that come from the server. How can you do that, uh, given that you did questions? Are, are the data constantly the same or not? Well, I, can, I can ask. Or um, so you are totally right. If when you write your UI test, uh, probably you want to also test the, the network. But this is probably uh, I don't know. It's the naming is always a naming convention. Uh, the integration test, maybe I don't know. Um, but we also do this. So when we write the test for the first time, we effectively make network calls. And we use uh, this uh, library that uh, the my colleague told before, NSBCR. This one. <laughs> we use uh, this uh, this library to record the uh, response from from the server. So this means that from time to time, meaning uh, every week so or every ten days, we switch again and we try to refetch again the response from the server. And we compare at this point, we need to compare manually the screenshot with the previous one because, of course, the API give us, uh, I don't know, a different list of ads in, the, in that case. So I totally agree with you. Um, but th this in this case, we are able to run the tests fast and are more reliable So because we don't need to care about the changes on the API. So this is more similar to <laughs> unit test, I don't know. Um, but when we switch the records to on, in that case, it's a really uh, an integration test. Do you want to add something, Rob? Another question. Uh, so first question about uh, parallel execution, actually, because we also try to execute them in parallel on a single machine, <laughs> but then it turned out that uh, it's maybe too slow because simulator is usually very much more resource hungry. And if we have, for example, a heavy application, then it's possible that they are too slow, for example, if we use like two simulators in parallel on a single machine, so we end up you know, using like multiple machines. So we still execute them in parallel, but on multiple machines, like in the network, and then we have the information. So uh, how do you, like, why do you decide to execute this on a single machine? Is, is there some special reason for this, or you don't have enough machines? And which machine it should be? Maybe this is some powerful Mac server, maybe from um, uh, I don't know which type of application are you are you creating, right? Uh, maybe is it possible that your application is very heavy? I don't know. It's a video game or it's a con CPU uh, consuming, but uh, our application uh, is not. So we have a couple of uh, Mac Minis where we run. Uh, uh, not unit test, not UI test in parallel, but we run a Jenkins job in parallel. Uh, it's a normal Mac Mini with an SSD disk and uh, it's a lot of RAM, like a six 16 gigabytes. And uh, no, there is no um, slowdown. And how many the the only. You run in parallel on those sorry. How many simulators you run? Four. In we are running four simulator, two iOS. Uh, because we still support I iOS 4, so we have two iPhone with iOS uh, 8.4 and 9.3, and we also have the iPad version, so other two simulator for the iPad version. Of course, one thing that is uh, super important on the Mac Mini is the HD HDMI dongle. So if you do not have any display, in that case, it will become super slow. Yeah, but uh, no. but, uh, yeah. and the other question is about this uh, Facebook framework for screenshotting. Actually, we also use it and there is a big pain in this framework because, as you said, when Apple decided to change the font, for example, then we have to prepare different screenshots and also for iOS screen, we also have to prepare different screenshots. For example, if you decide to test on iPhone 6S, 
where, where screen resolution is different and we have to provide different screenshot data. For example, the designer decides to change something that we also have to replace screenshot. It's very time consuming, so how do you deal with this? Um, no, we do not have any silver bullet in that case. Yes, of course, uh, we have uh, four simulators. So if the designer decides to change uh, the color of the navigation bar that is present in every screen, this means that you need to run uh, the test with the record mode too and re-record all the screen. But we do like s quite often and at the end uh, you just run the test six minutes. We run the on four simulators six minutes. And then we also have some script that generates an HTML page with uh, the difference of the screenshot, and you just and uh, with the the changed part become red, and Is you just open source? sorry. Is it also open source the script? Uh, yeah. No, it's not, but it's pretty simple, and we can put off open source. It's uh, not a problem. Yeah, yeah sure. Nice <laughs> sure, sure, and. Uh, Okay, and uh, in that case, it takes just uh, like, uh, depends on how many screenshots we have, but uh, minutes, like 10 minutes to scroll down the page and check if the difference is just on the, on the navigation bar color. Oh, no question. Do you have like the accessibility labels somewhere so that they don't get uh, lost? Yes. Because there, there will be a lot, like hundreds of buttons in the same app. Do you have them somewhere, or do you write tests when you're writing the app? Um, we try to make our application usable, also for people that have problems. So, we started using the accessibility label even before running the test with Kif. So basically, we use just the same accessibility label that we have on uh, on the main app. So if the button is called the follow user, we use exactly the same um, accessibility label on the test. So um, question. Just one question regarding like um, permissions when you need to access, for example, the photos of the users. Mm -hmm. um, do you also test it in your, uh, you have this also included in your UI test and how do you like solve this problem? Because we had the problem with like this dialogue totally blocked our UI test and we were not able to run them. Uh, I have to answer with the same answer as my colleague. Uh, we do not test uh, the negative case, but with uh, X with uh, SimCTL we can uh, fake we can fake the the permission. So we for the test we ensure that we have the permission. Okay, uh. fair enough. Your question? No. Cool. Thank you, guys. <laughs>